the G9 is one of the best super ultrawide monitors existing in a relatively uncompetitive market, and having used it for the best part of two months in a variety of situations, these are the five things that you should know before purchasing this behemoth. At 108 pixels per inch, the G9 is on the lower end of the spectrum when it comes to pixel density. For context, 15 inch laptops with 1080p screens have over 140 ppi. The relatively low pixel density is mostly apparent with text. In order to combat the rough edges, I had to sit slightly further away from the monitor. 60 to 70 centimeters is an ideal distance for me. And reducing sharpness in the OSD also helped to smooth some of the pixelated edges. With the sheer size and impressive curve of the G9, brings along a rather unwanted noise during everyday use. Thermal expansion, which leads to things expanding when hot and contracting when cold, causes the panel gaps to create this annoying popping noise. This isn't a one-off issue on my G9, as I've seen plenty of other people report the same issues with their G9 as well. These sounds don't only happen as the monitor heats up, but also reoccur once the monitor is off and is cooling down. So if you're sensitive to these kinds of sounds, I would recommend to avoid this monitor entirely, as this is a noise you will have to live with. The fact that many OLED TVs capable of high refresh and low input lag exists in today's world, it's almost criminal that a monitor with the price tag of the G9 lacks any kind of sound output. They don't have to include fancy Harman Kardon branded speakers, but at the very least, some basic integrated speakers would be great for the occasional use. With an unconventional 32 by 9 aspect ratio, developers don't always optimize their websites for super ultrawides. So you may find that many of the pages you frequently visit do not take advantage of that extra screen real estate. To combat this problem, you can try using an app called Power Toys, which gives you the ability to split the screen into your own designated zones. These zones are then accessible by hitting shift and dragging until the window snaps into your desired area. And by hitting control plus shift, you are able to extend a window over multiple zones in one go. This final point is probably the biggest concern most people have when considering a curved ultrawide for the very first time. If you have never used a curved display in the past, the initial experience could be quite nauseating. But as time progresses, that extreme curvature will start to look normal, to the point where looking at a flat display may start to look abnormal. Speaking from experience, my eyes adjusted to the 1000R curve within a few days, and I no longer felt overwhelmed by such a big display. In my honest opinion, the extra curve makes such a wide monitor more usable as content is wrapped around you as opposed to being positioned further away from your eyes. If the curve is still a concern, try to purchase the monitor from a place with good return policies and spend some quality time with lots of mixed usage to adjust to the display. So to conclude, I think the G9 is a great monitor if you have a very specific workflow or game that can take advantage of such a wide display. For example, racing games that can utilize a wider field of view or Excel spreadsheets needing that extra horizontal real estate. If that doesn't sound like the typical things you do, then I think a smaller ultra-wide or even a 16x9 4K monitor is going to be a better choice. So that's the 5 things I've noticed about the Samsung Odyssey G9. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.